Hey, and welcome back to VFX Tutors. As you know, I'm Josh, and in this tutorial we're going to be continuing with our Booble project. So, we've just gone through and done our edit, and you've gone through, and I, thought, I wasn't going to do this, but then I realised actually it's quite important to do. And I, I was doing it for my own stuff, but I didn't realise it's probably a good idea you guys do it as well. So I'm adding frame handles to my shots. So... What frame handles are is basically some extra frames at the beginning and end of your cut. So at the moment we have, so I've, I've got up to here, and I, I, re I realised I better actually record this, um, just because it might be useful, might not be. Um, yeah, so effectively when we export this out and transcode it, we're only ever going to get what we have in our timeline. So if the edit changes and we need to shift it a couple frames we don't have that data to quickly change it whereas if we add extra handles so say less we so for the instance i'm adding 24 frame handles so i'm going to add 24 frames to the end and 24 frames to the beginning and that gives me absolutely tons of room to play around with the edit if i'm not happy with it in a couple weeks and this is something that will always happen in actual industry work um, it may not happen with your own stuff because you might just be happy with the edit, but um, it's good to sort of future-proof yourself by having that sort of wiggle room within your edit. So I'm sure there's a way, proper way to do this in Red Cine X. There's, there's no way that I'm actually this is um, I'm not a pro user at this. I just know enough to get me by, and I bet you there's probably a magic button, and people are probably laughing at me the way I do this, but it's brute force manual way um and it works for me and um if you know if you know the magic button to add automatic frame handles that's that would be great so i'm just going to add because i've already done most of these i'm just going to go through and actually do this one so what i use is total frame count here on the left and current frame Uh, yeah, sleep on current frame. Because obviously, if I put this, because this, this clip has still got 180 frames at the start, if I can actually drag it, it seems to be stuck on the timeline. Just going to pull this out of the way. So, what I've been doing, I know this is probably quite an archaic way. So, my thing's on a frame 182, all the way up to the end. Two eight one. So I've been just shuffling around. Just make sure you save it. This is a bit of a archaic way to do it, but uh, this is just how I've been doing it. So if you do know, so for each one of these, I'm just being uh, naming, uh, writing notes down for all of these so I know where my edit cuts are. And you should try and keep them consistent. So I've been adding 24 frames uh, either side. So let's just bring this. So. so if it was 58 frames, it'd be an extra 48 frames. I think it's from a previous one. So basically what's going to happen is my actual working range is going to be 1,001. But I need, like, if I if my edit changes and I need to shift it, like, three or four frames left and right, I can't if I've only transcoded that amount of frames. So I'm going to transcode a cut range of 977 to 1082. The actual delivery range is in here. So this now allows me to be very flexible with my edit. I can move this a twenty. I can move this a whole second left and right, which is absolutely massive in an edit. You probably most of the time wouldn't have to do that at this stage because your edit will be so so close and tight anyway. But um, yeah, it just gives you a little bit more wiggle room. So for a shot here, starts at one hundred and eighty one. So I'm just going to do 181 minus 24, and that's 157. And 
And I'm just going to bring my current frame down to 157. And now I know that's got 24 frames. That's got 24 frames at the start of what I want. So I'm going to go to the end. Ooh, why is it jumping? Very weird. Ooh, I'll stop liking that. 281. So 281. Really didn't need to use the calculator for that, but anyway. Uh, so 305. So now I've, I bet you people that are really good users at Rennie City X probably are laughing at me now the way I do this, but um, it's the only way I know how. I have looked it up and I can't see much in the document. But anyway, now I know that this range has got 24 frames at the start and end. So what I want to do now is export this out. And I've got my transcoded handles. I, I don't know why I did that. It's exactly the same as what I was doing before with the, the transcode. So it doesn't really make a difference. I'll open it up and show you what I was doing. So I've just called it that. It's open EXR, set up, not changed any of it. Output resolution is the clip. So the reason why I'm doing this at the clip range is because I know in some shots that I'm going to want to push in slightly because um, I reused shots to save time. Um, and you'll see why I had to re save time when we get around to doing the HGRI. So all. It was all going so well up until we needed to uh, do all that. And uh, yeah, we'll get to that part. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're just so we could have the whole full resolution to push in because we're still going to only really work at UHD. But if I transcode these now, because I can use Resolve, and Resolve's great, but you have, you're capped at UHD if you're not if you don't have the Pro version. Um, so in Red Cine, you actually get whatever resolution out. So when I did my push-ins, I have the 5K to do the push-ins and then export that out as UHD. So I won't lose any of that great resolution. Um, I'm going to leave my export pipeline to the full graded IPP2. And leaving pretty much all of this standard apart from my output location. And what we are on now is B11. And I've got EL1s in here because I've also done the uh, the element sh shots, which is the, the Macbeth chart and the chrome balls. So that's only like one or two. So don't forget to actually do those as well. B11, because those would be useful. Although we're going to be setting up, hopefully, one lighting setup for this. We shouldn't have to change it that much. But yeah, so now we've added our handles onto that. And all we need to do is now go export. And that should start running the export. And if we go over, because we'll probably rename these as well at some point. Um, at this stage, I just want to keep as I want to keep as much of it um, in relation to the actual shots off the card as it is straight away. So we'll give these proper names at some point. So usually, if I was just using, because usually I've used my 4K camera, and that's fine, so I can do that all in Resolve anyway. And I'm sure it's just because I just don't know how to use a Red Cine X properly. Um, there's probably something in here that you can change it, but um, yeah, let's not worry about that. And. Hopefully that shouldn't take too long. So yeah, so all we're doing in this one, like we've already shown you how to, and you don't have to do this, it's just for me, future proofing my edit. And that should be done. Just wait so it says finished, and we'll just double check our file. 
I was just looking in the wrong one, and I was a little bit concerned, but I was looking in the Element one. Yeah, and it all seems it's all there. And you can see by the naming that uh, it's naming it from the metadata on the card and how big these files actually are now. So always be careful with your uh, handles. But um, yeah, there's not really much else I need to go on. You don't even really need to watch this if you're not doing this. I'm just saying it's just like good practice to put frame handles on your footage. Um, just saves you a lot of time and effort if you have to do this again. Because if that, if you want to change the edit, you, you have to go back and do this all again. Um, we might still need to, but hopefully at this point, your edit is so tight and very close that you shouldn't have, you should, 24 frames is more than enough than what you actually need. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go on. I've waffled enough. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really does help. To say if you've got any good uh, Red Cine X uh, tips on how to actually use it properly, that'd be great. Stick that in the comments. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one, which I am not sure what will be yet. But yeah, we will see you. <laughs> Have a good evening. Right, bye.